One of the enduring stories of the Titanic are the engineers struggling downstairs with the pumps trying to keep them going to the very end. Unfortunately, the Titanic sank and the question comes up, why? Did the engineers do something wrong? Was there something they were not aware of? Or was there a failure with the equipment? Let's have a look at this for a second. Titanic was an extremely large ship and people think that everything associated with it was as large as imaginable and that's not exactly the case. And unfortunately, it's the case with the bilge and the ballast pumps. These pumps on merchant ships are not really designed to deal with catastrophic flooding as happened on Titanic. What they're really meant to do is to move water from one tank to another and to pump excess water overboard. The first pump is called a ballast pump. That moves about four tons of water per minute. And what that's meant to do is to move fluids between tanks. If a ship has a list, you use the ballast pump to move the ballast. It goes from the low side of the ship to the high side and the vessel will even out. The second pump is called a bilge pump. It's small and it handles about two and a half tons per minute. All ships leak a little bit. The bilge pumps act as sort of a scavenger pump to keep this slow ingress of water in check and get it overboard. When you look at pictures of Titanic in port, you'll notice that there are cascades of water coming out all along the ship's length. Some of them are the bilge pumps keeping the bottom of the ship dry. Some of them are sanitary drains from toilets from bathtubs, from sinks, you have oil coolers, and other mechanical appliances that need to be kept cool. It could be any number of things. There's only eight of them on board, and they're scattered along the length of the ship. And they're plumbed in such a way that they're really meant to deal with local flooding, not flooding en masse at the extreme end of the ship. The pipes just are not laid out that way. During the inquiry, Edward Wilding, who was the ship's designer, was asked about the rate of flooding. And he calculated that Titanic was taking on 500 tons of seawater a minute. That completely overwhelmed the pumps. Those little pumps really could only ha handle a maximum of four tons per minute. So even if they had all been operating, they would have been completely overwhelmed. The only thing that the pumps could do is maybe save those critical compartments, number five, number six boiler rooms. If they could be kept dry, the ship might survive. But if they flooded, the ship was, was lost. Now, is there anything available that might have saved the Titanic? You know, how do warships handle this? Warships are designed to, uh, to survive multiple hull breaches, literally to be torpedoed and to be damaged far worse than Titanic ever was. They handle it in a completely different way. The engines have a, a massive pump called circulating pumps. And on Titanic, those pumps moved about 80 tons of water per minute. On a warship, those pumps would have been connected to the bow through massive pipes about 30 inches in diameter. A warship might have been able to, through her circulating pumps, discharge all that flood water. So theoretically, it might have worked. But in Titanic's specific case, it wouldn't. Because even at 80 tons per minute times four pumps, that's not enough to reach 500 tons per minute, which was as fast as it was coming in. So in other words, no matter what pumps on Titanic were brought to bear, no matter how the pipes were arranged, there was no way any pump on board or any combination of pumps was going to be able to, to stem the tide. The Titanic simply was lost. The question comes up, well, could anything have been done that would have ensured Titanic survived? Yes, warships, because they are not built against a budget, can afford massive pumping arrangements. Um, 
the difficulty for a merchant ship is those pumps will realistically never be used. A warship, by definition, has to go out in the world and be prepared to sink. Merchant ships go out of the world hoping they're never sunk, and chances are they won't be. And so it's difficult to economically justify why you need a set of massive pumps for accidents which really never happen. As I mentioned, one of the problems was the pumps on Titanic were in the wrong spots. They did not really draw from the head of the ship where the flooding was. And so much of the effort of the engineers was an attempt to get temporary pipes run back to those unused pumps, hoping that those extra few tons per minute, even if they couldn't save the ship, would at least prolong the sinking and help save lives. In its way, it's rather heartbreaking because they all knew that those pumps simply were not large enough for the task. And no matter how many pipes were run, how many pumps were brought online, the ship was doomed.